Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this new lecture, lecture 13. In this lecture, we are going to continue with chapter 6, Global Connections, the chapter that we started last time, and we spoke about globalization. Uh, we defined it as uh, the world uh, uh, developing a new, cult new culture, a new single culture and, new, uh, and a single economy, and um, this is being um, achieved through the transnational or the multinational uh, companies and the developed means of communication and the technological devices, the new technological devices. Today, in fact, we are going to uh, speak about uh, developing writing skills. And uh, here we are going to uh, uh, use, uh, to speak about using the correct form of a word. Um, many words have different forms from different parts of speech. When you write, uh, be careful to use the correct forms of words. Here I will explain the uh, meaning of parts of speech. In fact, we can classify words uh, into different parts of speech. For example, we can have nouns, verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. And uh, in each sentence, we have to know when to use the noun, and when to use the verb, and when to use uh, the adjective or the adverb. So every part of speech has its own use in the sentence. We will look at some examples. The first example is, I have an appointment for a medical examination today. Here we have the word examination. The part of speech of this word is noun. It is a noun. Uh, and in this blank space, we can only use a noun. I have an appointment for a medical, what? For a medical examination. So we need a noun here. The second example is, the doctor examined the young boy. The doctor examined the young boy. The word which is underlined is examined. What part of speech is this word? Uh, this word is a verb. It is a verb. And here in this place, we can only have a verb because after the subject, the doctor, we need a verb here. The doctor. Uh, what did the doctor do? The doctor examined the young boy. This is a verb and it is in the simple past. The third example, the medical examiner said the man has died from a heart attack. The underlined word is examiner. Examiner is a noun here. It is a noun and it is used for persons. An examiner is a person who examines. And here we have uh, the medical examiner. In this place, we can use a noun, and uh, this noun is uh, given to a person, so that it becomes the subject of this sentence. So you have to pay attention to parts of speech whenever you write your sentences. Uh, you use nouns in the place of nouns, verbs in the place of verbs, and if we uh, if we speak. Uh, further on the, about, about this topic, you can also use adjectives and adverbs in their right place. W uh, we move on to an exercise. The exercise is in your book on page 109. So open your book on page 109. Page 109. So. The exercise says completing sentences with the correct form of a word. Complete each sentence uh, below with the correct form of the words in parentheses. The first one is done to you. The first one says, many countries are worried about increasing. We have the uh, word or the verb exa uh, immigrate between parentheses. Uh, here we need a noun. So here we can say immigration. The noun from uh, the verb immigrate is immigration. We added the suffix shin to get the noun. So this is our noun. Immigration is the noun. The sentence will say uh, will be uh, as follows: Many countries are worried about increasing immigration and have strict have strict laws 
to control the number of people who can become citizens. Let's move to sentence number two. Uh, we have between parentheses the, the word tourist. Tourist. Tourist is a noun. It is used for a person. Uh, a person who uh, visits other countries is a tourist. So it says, is an important source of revenue for a lot of countries. Here we need a noun. Here we need a noun. And um, the noun should be tourism. Tourism is an important source of revenue for a lot of countries. So tourism as an activity, as uh, uh, an activity, is an important source of revenue for many countries. Uh, example number three, or sentence number three, many cities in the United States have a multiculturalism atmosphere. Here we have the noun atmosphere. Atmosphere is a noun, and it needs an adjective. It needs an adjective. The adjective from the word multiculturalism, uh, if you remember, is multicultural. Multicultural means having many different cultures, a society which has many different cultures in it. So here, the answer is, or the word that we can use is multicultural. It is an adjective that modifies the noun uh, atmosphere. This can easily be seen in their great, the uh, word between the parentheses is diverse, of ethnic restaurants. In their great, here we have an adjective, great, it needs a noun to modify it. The adjective great needs a noun to modify it. So here we should look for the uh, noun which we can derive from the word diverse, from the adjective diverse. The noun is diversity. So here, great diversity. Diversity means composed of many different uh, people or things. Our sentence now has a uh, meaning. Our sentence says, many cities in the United States have a multicultural atmosphere. This can easily be seen in their great diversity of ethnic restaurants. Sentence number four. The world is truly becoming, we have here, interdependence. Interdependence uh, is a noun, uh, but here in this uh, space, blank space, we need an adjective. The word is becoming what? We need an adjective to tell about uh, the characteristics of the world now, or the characteristic of the world now. So it's really becoming, the, uh, the adjective from the word um, independence or from the noun independence is independent. We write here independent. And our sentence becomes the world is truly becoming independent. No country today can survive in. We have here the, the verb isolate and we need here a noun. We need a noun. Uh, what is the noun from the, the, wor the, the, the verb isolate? It is isolation. So here we write isolation and our sentence becomes no country today can survive in isolation. Good. We move now to number five. Number five says it is almost impossible to keep up with all the recent, between parentheses, technology changes. We have a noun here, changes. It's a noun. And as we said before, our nouns need uh, an adjective to be uh, modified or an adjective which can give them um, a characteristic. So here, the adjective from the, the noun technology, if you remember, uh, in the first part of uh, this chapter, we said that the adjective is technological. Technological. So here we write technological. This is the answer to uh, this exercise. Exercise 1, page 109. Um, you have the answers 
written to you in the slides. So exercise one, page one nine. Uh, number one, many countries are worried about increasing immigration and have strict laws to control the number of people who can become citizens. Number two, tourism is an important source of revenue for a lot of countries. Three, many cities in the United States have a multicultural atmosphere. Multicultural atmosphere. This can easily be seen in their great diversity of ethnic restaurants. Four, the world is truly really becoming interdependent. No country today can survive in isolation. And the last one, number five, it is almost impossible to keep up with all the recent technological changes. What is the aim of this uh, exercise? It is to tell you that it's important to know which part of speech you have to use in certain places in a sentence. In, our, in order to write your sentences correctly, you have to know when to use the noun, when to use the adjective, and when to use the verb or any other um, word. Let's move on. Uh, we are continuing with the, uh, developing writing skills. And now we are going to look at uh, using relative clauses. Using relative clauses. Um, in fact, here we can combine two sentences with a relative pronoun. We can use a relative pronoun in order to combine two sentences which have uh, the same subject. So the relative pronoun who, pronouns who, which, where, when, and that can be used to introduce relative clauses. So we can use any of these relative pronouns to introduce a relative clause. Let's explain those relative pronouns. Who is used uh, with persons? So with, with person, I use who. Which is used with thing or things. So here persons and here things. Where is used with, with place? Where is used with place? When is used with, with time? And that can be used both with person and thing. Person plus persons plus things, we can use that, okay? So, uh, we have here a, a relative clause answers the question who or which one? Who or which one? Examples. The woman who or that runs the restaurant is Japanese. The woman who runs the restaurant is Japanese or the woman that runs um, the restaurant is Japanese. So here, <coughs> The underlined clause is the relative clause. This is the relative clause. And here we combine two sentences. The first one is the woman runs the restaurant. The second one is the woman is Japanese. So if we uh, divide or if we divide this into two sentences, we can find the first one is the woman runs the restaurant the woman runs the restaurant and the second this is sentence number one the second sentence is the woman is Japanese the woman is Japanese. So we combine those two sentences using a relative pronoun and we obtained the relative clause who runs the restaurant or that runs the restaurant. Example number two, the watch that or which I bought you is Swiss. Here we use that or which with, the, uh, with things also. Uh, the watch is uh, a thing and here the relative clause is that I bought you or which I bought you. You have the choice uh, to use that I bought you or which I bought you. Next sentence, the office where I work employs people from four different countries. Here we have where, the relative pronoun where, that we said it uh, is used with place. The office is a place and we used here where 
uh, in our relative clause where I work. The relative clause here is where I work. The last example, summer is the time of the year, or summer is the time of year when the weather is the hottest. Our relative clause is when the weather is the hottest. The relative pronoun we use with time is when. Summer is the time of year when the weather is the hottest. So when is used with uh, time, okay? To practice uh, these uh, pieces of information, or to have these pieces of, uh, pieces of information into practice, we will move to an exercise uh, on page 109. It's exercise 2. Exercise 2, page 109. Um, in fact, in the book you have the pronouns who, which, that, and where. But I added the, uh, the pronoun when, which is used with time, to this list of pronouns. So, completing sentences with relative pronouns. The first one is done to you. Globalization is inevitable, and people who do not realize this are going to be left behind. So, here we have people, we use it who. People, persons, we use it who. Uh, example number two, transnational companies pay fair wages, are welcome everywhere, everywhere. So here we have transnational companies. Transnational companies. What can we use here? We can use which, because we have things here, which are that. Our sentence becomes trans, uh, transnational companies which pay fair wages are welcome everywhere. Our transnational companies that pay fair wages are welcome everywhere. Number three, the global village is a place. So place. What do we use with place? We use where, the pronoun where. So here we, we have to write where. Uh, the global village is a place where many languages are spoken. However, the one is predominant English. The one, the one here re uh, refers to language, the one which is, which is predominant is English, or the one that is, that is predominant is English. Number four, the car parts, here we have objects, blank, um, I uh, just bought were made in six different countries. The car parts, which I just bought, or that I just bought. Because here we have um, uh, things, we are speaking about things. Car parts are things, okay? Next, number five, um, some futurists foresee the world as city states. City states, what do you think? This is place, city states uh, are places. So, some futurists foresee the world as city-states, blank, are uh, connected by technology. Are connected by technology. If you continue uh, reading the sentence, we, uh, we know that this is, these are things. Uh, so, we, we use which or that. Which or that are connected by technology, which or that are connected by technology. Uh, we have another sentence in this exercise, uh, which is sentence number six. I added, I added sentence number six. It says, uh, uh, I remember the day I met you. I remember the day I met you. And here we have the day. The day is time, so we need to write when here, when. Uh, our sentence becomes, I remember the day when I met you. I remember the day when I met you. Uh, here, in the next slide, you will have the exercise done to you. Um, it says, the first one says, globalization is inevitable and people who do not realize this are going to be left behind. Number two, transnational companies that pay fair wages 
are welcome everywhere. Number three, the global village is a place where many languages are spoken, which, uh, however, the one which is predominant is English. Number four, the car parts that I just bought, bought were made in six different countries. Number five, some futurists foresee the world as city-states which are connected by technology. And this is an effect of globalization. Uh, the world is now like many states which are connected together through uh, technology. Number six, I remember the day when I met you. Here we, we speak about the time. The day is uh, time, so we use when. Okay, this is the end of uh, chapter six. Uh, in the next uh, part, we are going to, uh, uh, I am going to do an exercise with you, um, an exercise which will prepare you for the exam. You know, in the exam you will have uh, 70 multiple choice questions. Uh, those multiple cho uh, choice questions will be uh, about what we have seen in those 13 or in the 14 lectures um, and you will be asked about uh, the points that we dealt with during the previous lectures or during the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the course, uh, the points that we dealt with in the course and uh, the questions will be in the form of multiple choice questions. Um, we have an example here. Uh, the the examples are two questions about this lecture. Uh, the, question, the first question is, what is the best word that fits in the following blank space? We have a sentence here. Many countries are worried about increasing blank and have strict laws to control the number of people who can become citizens. Here we said that uh, we have an adjective, increasing, and we need a noun here, a noun, a noun about, um, from the verb immigrate. A, we have immigrate, B, immigrates, uh, C, immigrant, and D, immigration. The right, or the best uh, word to put in this uh, blank is immigration, because immigrate is a verb, Immigrates is also a verb that we can use with he, she, or it. Immigrant is the noun used with the person, and here we don't need to uh, uh, put a noun which, uh, modif uh, which is about a person, because increasing uh, cannot be used with persons. Uh, it can be uh, only used with things. The answer is D. Question number two, what is the relative pronoun that fits best in the blank space below. Um, the sentence is globalization uh, is inevitable and people do not realize this are going to be left behind. Here uh, we have who, which, when and where. Uh, we have people here. Which one of these relative pronouns uh, can be used with people? It's a who because which is used with things when is used with time, where is used with place. So this is the way um, you will be asked uh, in the exam. Uh, type of the, this is the type of questions you will have in the exam. Uh, don't worry about the exam. It will be easy and uh, I hope you good luck in the exam um, and uh, I hope that you benefited from this course. In the next lecture, lecture 14, we will make a revision and we will relate it to the exam. This is the end of the lecture. Uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.